Okay, got a short little video here uh, just to kind of close out our discussion on cost estimation. Uh, two multiple choice questions, uh, but if we if we think about the reason why the correct answer is the correct answer, and then it, as we can, why the incorrect answers are actually incorrect, uh, that can uh, enhance our learning as we seek to understand the way that different costs behave and then use that information uh, to predict costs uh, into the future. So question number uh, 25, uh, first question on the video says, which of the following statements about difficulties in cost estimation is true? Okay, so we're looking for the true statement here, but we also kind of need to understand why the incorrect answers are incorrect. So letter choice A says changes in uh, the company's production technology make estimating the company's production costs easier. The reason that this is not true is because any changes in technology, uh, and usually when we have a change in technology, we're talking about a situation where uh, technology has improved, technology is more efficient. Well, the change itself, quite honestly, even if we were going the other direction, the change in and of itself makes uh, estimating production costs more difficult because there is a change. What we are used to is not going to happen in the future. So we have to essentially make uh, a series of educated guesses as to how those changes in technology uh, are going to uh, impact uh, production costs. Uh, but we don't have uh, those, those changes. Again, hopefully we're talking about lower costs but uh, but those are that's actually a complicating factor. Answer choice B says the shorter the time period, the higher the probability of inappropriately matching activity and cost. This is actually going to end up being the correct answer. And the reason is uh, quite simple. The shorter the time period, the less data we have. And if, you know, that in and of itself is a valid reason. We also have to understand, uh, you know, the shorter uh, the time period we have, if we have any outliers in our data, um, we're not necessarily going to know that just looking at a, a really short time period of, say, three months. Um, but as we look at nine months and we have only one outlier, a little bit easier to uh, to identify that. Uh, plus, again, with nine months versus three, we have more uh, data. Okay, but I also want to look at answer choice C. It says the stronger uh, the economy, the harder it is to accurately match activity and cost. The reason why this is uh, false is because when we have a, uh, a strong economy, we have a more predictable economy. Uh, we can plan for uh, activity and cost uh, much easier because we can say, okay, well, we estimate um, you know, our range of activity is far, far more narrow when we have a, a stronger economy. As the, uh, as the economy starts to cool down, we have a wider range of potential activity and cost. And then you know, if the economy cools off completely, you say, well, we might have a, a range on the low end that's true. However, fixed costs are going to become a problem, uh, right? Because in periods of low activity, um, they distort uh, prices uh, to being abnormally high. So stronger economy uh, actually improves predictability. And then uh, answer choice D says, when prices of a company's raw materials or labor uh, are rapidly increasing, cost estimations based on previous periods 
will overestimate future costs. Well, this is the, the exact opposite would happen. They would underestimate future costs because we're using old data before we had the increase, right? So if raw materials uh, or labor uh, are rapidly increasing, we have to say, okay, well, uh, all other things constant, we're going to have to assess what that increase is probably as a percentage and then apply it accordingly, okay? And if we do that, we might not over or underestimate future costs. But if we just use historical data when either of these are rapidly increasing, well, we're not, in count, we're not accounting for that increase. Uh, so that's why D is wrong. Question number 26, the second and last question in our video, says the introduction of production technology to replace labor in a manufacturing process would likely result in which of the following? And answer choice A says a shift in costs from variable costs to fixed costs. And this is actually going to end up being our answer. Um, and so we need to understand why. Labor, as we're using it in this course and as it is generally used, refers to a variable cost. Production technology, which replaces labor, is a fixed cost. So you know, when, we, when we have a lot of labor, we have high direct labor costs associated with the manufacturing process. With the use of production technology, we have a fixed cost called depreciation, which is a non, you know, we, we pay for the item and then we allocate that cost over time. I will say one thing uh, about the, uh, the rest of the answer choices. If you look at answer choice D, okay, if you look at answer choice D, this is the goal, okay, we are, our goal whenever we shift uh, costs from variable to fixed by replacing labor with technology, we are trying to accomplish, uh, we're trying to accomplish a, to accomplish a decrease in total manufacturing costs. Now that does not matter, or that doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen. What matters is whether or not we have enough volume to make the increased uh, fixed costs pay off. So um, I believe we had a question, uh, let's see, what was it? It was question number 22. So on this handout in a prior video about automated versus uh, manual processes, uh, probably the couple of videos before this, uh, and that will drive that point home. But uh, yeah, shift in costs from variable to fixed is the current trend.